well uh, in this video i will be discussing regarding breed groups so uh, it is one of kind of groups uh, it is countably uh, infinite and it is interesting in terms of like uh, related to it is related to like braiding of ropes and uh, the diagrams are interesting uh, it is also interesting that these groups play an important role uh, in understanding of uh, topological quantum computation so uh, we will just give a mathematical description of this group uh, in this uh, small video so but we start from the basic that what is a group so a group is a set and it is equipped with a binary operation uh, this binary operation is close uh, follow the closure property so it maps uh, the two elements of the set to the same element and so one of the important properties of a group uh, a set is a group when it follows the closure property and beside that we have the property of associativity then we have the property that there exist uh, the identity element in the group and then we have that uh, for every element we can find the inverse of that element and it belongs to the same group so if uh, this operation it follows these properties these four properties then the set equipped with this operation is called the group now given a group we can uh, talk about representation of the group so the representation of the group uh, i have written here it is a map from the group to a set of uh, to the linear operators uh, so this is a vector space so this vector space consists of uh, operators that means these are linear transformations uh, in some sense you can think them as matrices that will act on a vector space so what it means is that uh, corresponding to a group element we associate a matrix or a linear transformation so that we can extend the action of the group uh, to a vector space so uh, now uh, this is what we say uh, representation of the group and these are the uh, the representation must satisfy this particular property that uh, it should uh, preserve this composition like r of gi composed with gj so this composition is coming from the group and it is simply this uh, in this form so this composition is what is uh, equipped on this uh, vector space so this linear operator vector space it forms what we call as algebra so it is like a vector space on which we can do multiplication like we can do multiplication of the you know uh, the matrices so with this much we can uh, see some of the examples we can discuss some examples uh, so one of the group which is very common is the zn so the group is represented in this fashion what the what does this means is that uh, everything to this left side of the bracket uh, this this is not a bracket notation first of all everything to the left of this bracket is called a generator so this is a generator and so it generates this group such that uh, this generator power n so power n means uh, composed n times using the group composition uh, power n is equal to 1 so we have omitted 1 because everything to the right of uh, right side of this will be uh, made equal to 1 so what does then zn means what it means is that uh, you have you have a generator a if you have suppose z2 it means uh, there is a generator a such that a square is 1 that means the group only has the following elements one is the identity element that is a power 0 one is a and then a square is again 1 which is just the identity element so one is the symbol for identity element and this is the group z2 similarly zn will have identity element a a square up till a power n and here the composition is simply like a composed with a square is simply a cube like this so uh, in this way suppose uh, if i say if i just write z and then i just write a what what this means is that uh, you see uh, this means that i have e a a square a cube but now i don't know where i have to end it will keep on going because i don't have the condition that for some n i have uh, this equality 
so basically this group is what we call the set of integers so uh, this is countable and this is infinite so it is a countably infinite group or uh, uh, it is a discrete group also so uh, that's uh, one of the example and uh, so uh, and the second example which is uh, very useful uh, it is the group dn which is the di dihedral groups and what are these groups these groups are uh, the group of symmetry operations on what we call these polygons so suppose i have d3 uh, it means that uh, the symmetry operations means you take an equilateral triangle which is a regular uh, three sided polygon now you try it, now you rotate them and reflect via the bisectors so that will be the elements of this group and uh, and that uh, that can be this group can completely be defined in terms of two generators such that a square is always equal to 1 or the identity element here everything to the right side will be equal to 1 b power n will be equal to 1 where n will be specified and n is related to how many side polygon you want and further a b whole square is also one what it means is a b a b is one so just using these two uh, generators and uh, using these particular constraint we are generating this group d n so this is like a presentation of a group this we had the representation uh, but uh, this is like how you present the elements instead of uh, enumerating every element so uh, like a nice example will be like if you have d3 for example then uh, by this property what we have is uh, it is just identity element a and then a square uh, is equal to uh, 1 so now what we have is uh, then you have b and then as it is 3 so b cube is 1 so you have b b square but now you also have the elements which are composition of these two because of closure property. So you have a b, a b square and a b cube. Oh, uh, a, a b, a b square, uh, cube is not there because uh, we have only till b square. So this much, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This 6 element group is what we call uh, the D3 or it is the group of symmetries of a... Uh, uh, equilateral triangle uh, so if you have a triangle abc you can rotate it by 120 degrees two times those are two rotations and uh, those two rotations uh, are represented by this b and b square and this is like keeping it same and then you can do various kind of reflection so you have three reflections a ab and ab square so similarly you can have d4 which is also like uh, uh, for a square you can have like four kinds of rotations and then you can have a reflection of points about this axis or this axis like this. So uh, these are uh, now what is important is how can we represent this group. I, I talked about this representation here. So how can we represent this group. Uh, one of the important fact is uh, one of the two dimensional representation. So it will be a two cross two matrix. It is very easy to obtain for this group DN. So let us see. So DN has two kind of generators A and B and they have a constraint A square is one and B power N is one and then there is AB whole square is one. So now the representation must also uh, follow or uh, um, like it must uh, obey these constraints. So we perform a representation of this kind R of B we say it is a rotation matrix because we have the group contains rotations of these regular poly polygons of n sides. So the rotation will be by an angle of 2 pi by n for a fixed value of n. So this is a rotation matrix. So this is so you see uh, now I have represented one of the generator using the basic rotation the minimum angle that you have to rotate to get this figure 
and the other other generator can be represented as you see a square is one makes us uh, feel that this is like a reflection because if you re reflect over an axis two times uh, you get uh, identity so this is the reflection matrix so and once you have a and b now you know the uh, as they are the generators you know the representation of each of the elements of the group by simply using the formula that um, a uh, by by the fact that g1 composed with g2 is nothing but product of g1 and g2 so uh, this is called what we uh, by what we mean by representation so it was a two dimensional representation there can be different kind of dimensions of representation so now uh, after this extensive discussion we come to what is a braid group so first we uh, try to visualize this group uh, like pictorially so elements of braid groups are simply braids uh, so they are like ropes which are winding over each other and they run between a certain number of pegs or pins and they follow certain rules so you see suppose i have four pegs then i will call it a braid group 4 b4 okay and but you see this is not a braid group element because for this peg if you see here i am getting two ropes that are coming out but this can't happen so each peg will be always be uh, one rope will be coming out and only one rope will be going in so this is a wrong uh, element of this b4 so now i uh, suppose so one of the rule is that only one rope will be attached and now the second uh, thing is that we have to so you see this is again b3 because there are three pegs but you see all of them are valid because only one ropes are attached now comes the point is that you have to take care about which rope passes above which other rope so we distinguish the cases which is easy to understand using b2 so consider these two b2 element this connection is passing above this connection because uh, in this notation what i am saying is if a line is broken that means it is passing under the other line so this uh, so this first line is passing over the second one but in the next one the second one is passing over the first one but these two elements are distinct in the braid group b2 so in b2 this also belongs as well as this also belongs so that is an important point that this braid group is taking into its uh, represent uh, into its uh, presentation it is taking uh, the uh, like uh, the memory of how many times there is a winding over this uh, various wires and further there is a property which is like uh, like uh, it preserves the topology in some sense that uh, on stretching contracting you have to uh, think of that the elements remains equivalent so basically you see if you think about this element it is like there is this rope that is connecting second to second but over this rope there is a third to third rope but you see the rope is passing at both places above the second rope so if you if we just stretch these pegs like if this is a plastic and i stretch this plastic what i will get is something of this form And this is just the identity element you mean uh, one is connected to one two is two three is three so this is also belongs to uh, b3 and one more important point is that there is no backward bending so you can't have like you have two points and a loop goes like this or then another loop goes like this this every loop travels in a straight form from one direction to other direction so it's like a, it's like a flow of time like time won't flow backward similarly loop won't uh, bend backward we will see that the there is uh, important uh, connection of this flow of time in the case of these anions when we will discuss so now with the rules of this braiding setup we can ask what are the composition rules so the composition rules are very uh, simple it is simply that you take two elements of suppose b3 and how do you compose this is that you just first attach this with this, this with this, this with this, and then forget about the midsection, these dots. 
so basically what this means is so first one goes to the third but it passes above every other but after third the third one again maps to two but it passes below one of them so here also i have drawn that the first one is passing above everything but it will pass below so i have left a gap here so uh, again i am saying that the gaps correspond to uh, above or below so it passes below so i have kept a gap and then connected it here the second one connects to first one and first one remains as first one so the second one passes below so second one passes below and goes to first one so it is a simple composition rule that we can check uh, every time so now uh, we have to understand the fact that if so here you see there is a knot there is a winding here you see uh, this this uh, this uh, rope is passing above here and then below so you can say there is a two times winding here so one is here and one is here the here is there is one winding so if we don't distinguish this winding because because then uh, we don't need to uh, think about whether the rope is above or below and we can just uh, close this gap but if that happens this group is simply a permutation of n objects so till now uh, we were connecting the points and we were seeing that if the winding is there we are getting distinct elements here and here but if we think about permutation permutation of two object can be only one one way so either you don't change or you change once so these two elements would have been same but now they are different and this difference is what is giving rise to infinitely many elements of a braid group so whereas on one hand the permutation group sn uh, it has n factorial elements it is a finite discrete group the braid group on the other hand has infinitely many elements and the infinity arises precisely because you have to distinguish between these windings not only that the braid group b2 uh, it is isomorphic to the uh, uh, the z that we just sh sh showed this uh, group of integers this b2 uh, it can be checked because you see uh, z when i said it had just one generator a this b2 also has only one generator so the generator of b2 is just this element so you can uh, keep the string same or you can uh, braid them once or twice or thrice like this infinitely many times and in general if we want to present this group as we discussed presentation uh, explicitly uh, before it is presented in this particular fashion so a braid group with n pegs so here this is n pegs later we will see it will become n particles so a braid group with n pegs has n minus 1 generators that generates the group if we take composition of this we will generate the group but there are constraint over this n minus 1 generators and there these are the two constraints so these constraints actually makes the braid group a non abelian group so uh, they don't commute with each other so like this i have drawn the three generators of b4 the generators are of this form so you see if you have four pegs you first braid the first two pegs and keep the rest of the pegs unchanged then you braid the next two pegs and keep the other pegs unchanged then you braid the next two peg keep the other braid un unchanged like this you keep on going if the b if uh, this is not four like if you have b n here so you have precisely n minus 1 uh, generators so now we have a certain understanding of what is this braid group and we ask uh, where in physics it uh, comes into play so that's what uh, we will uh, now see so basically it comes into play when we discuss about uh, what we call as uh, this uh, statistics this boson fermionic statistic so while talking about the identical particles or indistinguishable particles we say that uh, if the wave function is symmetric it is a boson and asymmetric wave function gives rise to the fermion but actually where this stems out is 
the mod square the probability density of the wave function remains the same even if you change the identical particles so this is the main equation from where this symmetric asymmetric part comes out and here i am only discussing symmetry asymmetry in terms of spatial components there can be other components like the spin component also and we are not going into that detail but the point is that uh, if we have this uh, symmetry asymmetry then this equation will give rise to this particular equation here and now here we have this phase now instead of directly putting this phase as plus 1 or minus 1 like minus 1 for uh, fermions and plus 1 for bosons if we analyze this phase in terms of uh, dimensions and topology, we will see some interesting phenomena. So what happens is that if we define, uh, suppose this R2 minus R1 as some R vector, what we, what we mean, what we mean by the exchange, exchange means that once the particle was at R1, other one was at R2 and now the first one is at R2 and the second one in R1. So basically exchange means a mapping from R vector to minus R vector. So uh, let's try to see that. So if we try to see that, so uh, if we have particle 1, uh, 1 and particle 2 and this is R vector. I can say I can fix this particle and rotate the particle and commit here and now this is 2 and now I can just do a translation which is uh, which can go into the center of mass degree of freedom so essentially it means that taking r to minus r is equivalent to exchanging up to a translation so that's what I want to say that a one time exchange is like taking r vector to minus r vector where r is defined like this. So now if we perform a two exchange, our expectation is that uh, we must get like the identical uh, scenario back or like the two exchange will be equivalent to identity or performing no operation. So and indeed in case of sphere this works out because you see if we have a sphere like this and if we take the two antipodal points of the sphere. So one is uh, on the above origin, one is below origin. And then one of one will be R, other will be minus R. And then if we perform one more exchange, we will see that we get a great circle over the sphere. But the great circle can be, uh, this is difficult. The great circle if we see, it can now be continuously deformed to the initial r vector because we because sphere is a three dimensional object so we can use the third dimension and bring it back we can be, bring this back to again to a sin, uh, single point so in some sense like the great circle will run along the sphere and will again come back to a point precisely because the sphere is a closed surface and then we can say that that means if I if I perform two exchanges like taking this i theta square it is equivalent to 1 or identity or no change that means theta is of this form and then we see if it is even we have bosons or fermions. So precisely because we have three dimension this even and odd case is giving rise to bosons and fermions. Now you see what happens in 2D case where we have suppose exchange on a particularly fixed plane in that case we don't have this third dimension so what will happen is that if we have a particle 1 here and then we have the r vector and particle 2 here so i will go once around the this point to get minus r so this is minus r and this is one exchange and then I will again bring this particle back here and this is the second exchange but now I cannot because the circle is only here I cannot deform the circle anymore I cannot squeeze the circle or bring the point back to this uh, center so it's like uh, uh, there is empty space between the ring 
but in a sphere there is no such empty space on the surface so in other words i don't have a third dimension where i can pull the path up and slowly converge it back to this point so this has to do with uh, fundamental groups and homotopy uh, the continuous deformation of these paths but this is what essentially means that once you have performed a two x change you can say that i have uh, winded up one time and then you again perform a two x change you will say i have a winding uh, two times three times so you you are actually winding this winding number is taking care of this uh, z the set of integers so in that sense we can say this is actually associated with the braid group b2 and that is what indeed happens because if we now replace in our braid groups the if we uh, turn the braid groups upside down and replace the pegs with particles then it means that the lines that we are drawing so if this is the braid if this is a braid this means that if we say that the time is flowing in this direction time so in a third dimension so basically the points are coming above the there are two planes actually so uh, so there will be one plane here and there is another plane here and then if there are supposed two particles then one particle comes here and another particle comes here so so the time flows in unidirectional way and this is like the rope that we had and the particles uh, are the pegs and precisely how you wind up one particle around the other is making a problem because these particles they don't have another dimension to actually continuously deform the path back so hence the braid groups actually play an important role in uh, taking care of the unitary transformations and evolution of a, of a anionic systems and these also takes um, part in these uh, uh, topological quantum computations where you have to remember that i can stretch this path however i want but the knots the path will be equivalent whatever stretching i perform so they are uh, less prone to errors because of uh, this uh, stretching compressions etc so that's all for this video it was a, a small video on understanding what is uh, braid group